This debate is interrupted and set down for resumption presently. In accordance with the leave of the House, the Honourable Lord Manavau Winnie Laban will now make a valedictory statement. I call the Honourable Lord Manavau Winnie Laban. Mr. Speaker, e mua mua ono tāle wai a whai, ma o whatu lau i lipa ia lasi lasi ua whatasi mai. Tu lau o pono o Samoa, i lea whio o tupu me e. Tu lau o whale o polu, tu lau au auna lea tua. O te whata alo whatu i lipa ia, ma le ma malu o le aso. E ngā iwi o te motu, Te tangata whenua, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Taloha ni, mā lo lelei, whaka lo falahi atu, nisa bulavanaka, kam nā Māori, ki o rāna koutou katoa toa. Taloha lava, Mr Speaker, warm Pacific greetings to all my parliamentary colleagues, honoured guests, members of the diplomatic corps and Pacific Island communities, friends and family. Tonight will be the last time that I stand to speak in the New Zealand House of Representatives. Thank you for all coming to listen to my final remarks. In February 2000, I started my maiden speech to Parliament by honouring three women, my leader, my mentor and my mother. I vividly remember my mother sitting in the speaker's gallery during my maiden speech. Mum was in a wheelchair, supported by bottled oxygen. She had been released from hospital for the evening following major heart surgery. She was determined to be with me that night. My mother remained my most loyal supporter until she passed away in December. Her courage, strength and determination have been my greatest inspiration. Tonight, I honour her. My parents, Tatofa Kenneth Potoa Laban and Emmy Asi Tunapopopatu, came to New Zealand in 1954 as Pacific Island immigrants. My brother Ken and I were born in Wellington. Like many Pacific Islanders, my parents left their homes, families and country to come to New Zealand and provide their children with education and opportunity. Theirs was the immigrants' dream a dream that is shared by all who have come to this land. My parents wanted our family to be part of this nation, to participate as equals in this society, and they took great pleasure in seeing their children and grandchildren realise their dreams. I was honoured to be the first Pacific Island woman elected to this parliament and later to become a Minister of the Crown. I have often shared our family story when I have spoken at citizenship ceremonies in Porirua City and up the Kapiti Coast. It gives great hope and encouragement to, to new immigrants to know that their children can aspire to high public office. And I look forward to another child of immigrants being elected as the next MP for Mana. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I entered Parliament in November 1999 as a Labour List member, the last cab off the rank. <laughs> that was a nervous time. Parikura Horomia had just scraped in by 500 votes on election night. If Derek Fox's recount had been successful, Parikura would have lost his seat. 
he would have gotten off the list and I would have missed out. Oh, However, <laughs> Parikura has always come to the party. <laughs> he increased his election night majority and I was in. Kia ora, brother. Thanks. <laughs> Sonia Davies asked me to stand for Parliament in her Pencaro seat when she retired. I was not ready then, lucky for you, Trevor. <laughs> at, the <laughs> at that time, I was also unhappy with the direction and policies of the Labour Party. I was ready a decade later. The event that led me to enter Parliament was the closure of Kempson's factory in Wainui Amata. I had received a telephone call on Friday morning from an uncle who worked at Kempson's. He was distressed and he asked me to come to the factory. What I saw was a group of workers, many of them Pacific Islanders, who had just been told not to come to work on Monday. They had all been given notice. No redundancy, no holiday pay, nothing. Many of the men were in tears. They were bewildered and confused. Some who had worked for Kempsons for 20 or more years, they had been hardworking and loyal. They had expected that they would be looked after. But when the business was sold offshore, the Wainui Amata plant was closed down and the Employment Contracts Act offered, no worker, offered the workers no protection. The Kempson closure and the impact of the unfair employment contracts legislation on workers in my community was my motivation for entering Parliament. So it was with great satisfaction and one of my highlights in the House to move the closure motion that led to the axing of the Employment Contracts Act. <laughs> and the enacting of the Employment Relations Bill. What followed was a long period of peaceful industrial relations based on good faith bargaining and greater fairness and equity in the workplaces of New Zealand. It is sad to see that the wheel has turned and that punitive industrial legislation has been enacted and more is before the House. Mr Speaker, Parliament is one of the few places in this country where the great issues of the day can be debated and important legislation can be passed. However, too often it is the trivial matters of Parliament that grab the headlines or sound bites. I have really enjoyed debates that are about values and beliefs. In my view, good legislation should be based on sound values and clearly stated beliefs. Sometimes bad politics can stop good law. I was particularly disappointed when a private member's bill that I had brought to the House was defeated. The bill would have given families of people suffering from mental illness greater input into treatment and care options. This was good law. I had gained wide cross-party support in the House but the bill was defeated at the last minute because of political imperatives. That upset me. But it is important to keep things in perspective in Parliament. Mr Speaker, when I entered Parliament, I said that I would pursue a permanent interest in advocating and promoting the interests of women, Pacific people, Māori, the elderly, ethnic minorities and all New Zealanders who are struggling to live a life of dignity.